Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight with a very heavy heart. I don't know what it is that I've done. Cause all of these calamities to come upon me in my life. And I don't know what it is that I've done to cause this evil to somehow try to take residence in my life. I want it to go. And I'm commanded to go. And I'm telling Satan, Satan, you don't have any power over me. No matter how much you think you're wielding your power in my life, I want you to know one thing, that Jesus, Jesus, and only Jesus is power. Only Jesus is the glory. Only Jesus is almighty. Only Jesus has power over me. The spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, the spirit that dwells within me, is in full control. You may try anything you like. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You are under my feet. You are not the dominant power. My strength is in the Lord. No matter how rough it looks for me, my strength is in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have tread upon me, and seemingly you got away with it. But I want you to know one thing. You can stand in the pulpit and you can say anything you like. You can judge me and you can say I'm not fit for service, as you put it. But you don't know that. The apostles weren't all perfect people. God pulled them from all walks of life. And then there are there are people in the Bible who married people from all, all walks of life as well. And so I cannot tell you how wrong you are. I can suggest to you that you need to go back and revisit some of the scriptures and, 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 and think about yourself. You're not almighty. You're not all powerful. And you're not in the position to say who's fit to serve in the house of God. You may say, it's my life. I am a righteous man, but are you really righteous if you're going to judge somebody to the point where you say they can't do anything in the church, they can't be active in the church, and I, that person needs to change her life or his life out there because I want to change my life. I give my life, life over to Christ, and I said, Jesus, just as I am, without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me. And so once I said to Jesus, I accept you as my personal savior. Everything else is done. It's finished. Like Christ says, it's finished. When he died on the cross, it was finished then. Because at that moment when he died, and you being a preacher ought to know this, at the moment that he died, he took all of my sins and he washed them. He just washed them white as snow. It was like the perfect, the perfect moment in the, in the Christian's life because there's nothing that needs to be added to it or detracted from it. I don't have to worry about am I good enough. I don't have to worry about if what I'm saying is what you want to hear. I don't have to worry about if if uh, my my prayer is making you feel good. You need to come with that. I can't bring that to you. You need to come with it. I, you don't need me to get you happy. And you don't need to be sitting around trying to figure out if I am in the spirit of God. I am. I have, I have accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. And if you're standing around all stiff-necked and stuff-shirted and, and you're you're thinking I'm a big eye and that's a little you over there and you're not good as I am because she just came from over there and, you know, she doesn't have any money and she's old and she, she's got a baby or a child or whatever, no husband, you need to go back and try to find the Holy Spirit yourself. The problem's not in me, it's in you. I felt that I'm not everything that I could be. But I'm going to be better. God's not finished with me yet. Doesn't matter how old I am in years. My time is not God's time, and God's time is not your time. So you need to like think about that again before you start pointing fingers and trying to figure out who's good enough to stand up in your pulpit. And really, pulpit doesn't matter. I want to pray. I want to read the scripture in the church in the building. But the church is not the structure. The church is the people people that come there, who gather together, the, the congregation, you know, that's not the church. Congregation is the church. The structure itself is just to keep you from the rain and the wind. You know, groups want to meet there and gather together, but when you go out from there, that's the church. And uh, I'm already, already working in the church. I'm already talking to people and 
even now, as I sit here, I'm thinking about what can I do to make somebody else's life better. But instead of trying to make my life better, to try to help me, to lift me up, you're trying to pull me down. I don't think God is pleased with that. But I wish you well. And if the Spirit leads me there, I will come back there. I'm not going to beg you for your acceptance of me. Because I think it's you that you're rejecting. It's not me that you're rejecting. You're rejecting a part of me that you see in me that is really you. You're finding fault in me. It's the fault that you see in me. The fault that you see in me is really inside of yourself. That sin that you see in me, sin that you see in yourself. Because it only recognizes what it knows. Amen.